Welcome to another episode of the Alamo City Sportscast with Mike Jimenez and Joe Garcia. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Join the discussion as we broadcast live from beautiful West San Antonio. And remember to tip your hosts as it helps the show grow. What's going on, man? It's the funniest thing. I'm not used to it. It is a beautiful Tuesday here in San Antonio, Texas. My name is Mike Jimenez. That is Joe Garcia, and this is the Alamo City Sportscast. We're going to have a great show today because Joe and I are, are laughing already before the show starts. Typically, I waltz in 20 seconds before the show starts. Today, I got here, what, 10 minutes early? Yeah, you actually even got, got here time. Even got a sheet of paper with some notes of bullet points of what I want to talk about <clears throat> today. Say, we're getting fancy today. You got a piece of paper. We are, man. Lots of things going on. We'll be talking about poodles in Paris because <laughs> my friends and I last night were, were budgeting what it would cost to go to Paris. Not that bad. I was on Airbnb looking up for uh, houses or, or lofts there in Paris. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to make it, dude. It's going to happen because it's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. All I need is, like, one extra client at work, and I can make this happen. And it's the off-season in Paris, too. It's also freaking cold. Yeah, Right? It so it's 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 the, the off time of year over there. It's going to be gray and cold and all that stuff. It's not going to be the beautiful Eiffel Tower with the blue skies behind it. It's going to be gray and dreary because that's it's wintertime over there. Yeah, that, that's basically it. You know, the plane tickets, when you were looking at them, the pricing wasn't that bad. Dude. Eight, 800 bucks. That's a round trip, right? That's a round trip. Man. 800 bucks. Not bad. That included taxes and all that stuff. But how many hours is it you're going to be over the ocean to get over Okay, there? so it's an hour and a half to Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, God. Or if you go to <laughs> Dallas, it's an hour to Dallas. Yeah. But, if, but I would rather go to Atlanta because you oh. go to Atlanta for two hours, you stretch your legs, and then it's like seven and a half, eight hours from there. All right. If you go from Dallas, it's a nine, nine and a half hour flight Damn, over there. And the weird thing is, is that it actually is a little longer flight to get back home because of the gravitation of the Earth, the jet stream and all that stuff. Uh, it's 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 takes longer to go east to west than it does to go west to east. Yeah. So my friends and I were at a restaurant yesterday. By the way, I thought it was funny because they came over to my house, two of my best friends, Sean and Alex, and it was like, okay, we're going to go ahead and are we going to work out or are we going to go eat? And we decided to walk to a restaurant. Okay. So we walked 3.2 miles to a restaurant, and as we're there, we're having conversations about Paris. And we're having conversations about, okay, we need about $1,000 of spending money, go $800 funny, dollars for this. Yeah. We know how much the tickets are going to cost. And we figure even if we pad it a little bit, it's about three thousand dollars, not including lodging. That's a person, per person. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's going to cost about four grand, and that's for nosebleed seats. It's going to cost about forty five hundred <clears throat> to go over there just to watch one game. If you want to have the mid level seats, but again, they're going to have two games out there in Paris. I believe it's January twenty third and twenty fifth against yeah. the Indiana Pacers. Um, it's a home and home. Also, reports out there saying that the Spurs are missing or losing a home game by going to France, but are still going to want to play two games in Austin. So we've gone from 41 home games to 39, down to 38, but I'm okay with it. It is our gift to Victor Wembanyama. Okay. Yeah, to go play in his hometown. Hometown, home country, <clears throat> all of that stuff. By the way, we are live right now on YouTube. You can be <laughs> part of our stream mike's haircut is la cantera cool. la cantera cool. that's right i got a haircut today <laughs> baby look at this look at this got all the haircut this morning 9 a.m and i was the first one there dude uh got my haircut i had gone 17 <coughs> days without a haircut and i typically get one every 10 Jeez. and i went earlier this week about five days without shaving when i was gone last week so i'm back to normal back to normal clean shaven mike clean shaven mike dude uh, after i got my haircut i had time to go get some breakfast. So I'm trying to trim down a little bit, right? And I'm I'm just doing fewer carbs. I'm not doing keto because that's, I mean, 99% of people can't handle that, right? Yeah. So I'm just like reducing the carbs. I went to go get a, an egg white omelet, right? Okay. Egg white omelet, right? Perfectly <laughs> fine. Uh, went to a, a Taqueria Jalisco over oh, yeah. here near, near your house. What happened? So <laughs> I'm going to go pay and I finished paying and I went back to like get a toothpick. Yeah. And I hear these two people arguing with each other. And I'm thinking to myself, who are these people? And I realized that they weren't like friends or siblings or whatnot. It was one woman and a female manager of the place. And the manager was telling her, get out of this restaurant. Do not come back to this restaurant. Yeah. 
Wow. And the girl starts coming back at her going, all I'm saying is that you didn't give me enough food. And she goes, that is the portion size that we serve here. Well, it is not enough. Give me more food. And the, and the manager's like, that is not how it works. <laughs> went back oh, and forth. God, man. Dude, it was the funniest <clears throat> thing ever, man. Funniest thing ever. You know what? I need to get a haircut next. I'll probably be up next, probably Friday. I'm yeah. thinking after the how show. How often do you get a haircut? Dude, every so often, man. Every like month, every two months or so. Dude, every ten days, man. I gotta go do it. My hair gets long, man. I'm starting to get the little waves yeah. in there. I'm like, it's time to get a haircut. Yeah, you you do get the waves, man. But I I went 17, and it wasn't bad. But it just I just didn't feel right, man. I I feel in a good mood, Joe, when I get a haircut, dude. There's just something about it. When you go get a haircut, you come out, <laughs> you know, you, you get a little shave going. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah, my wife was getting on me already. She goes, "You need to shave, man." She goes, "You look a little, you look a little dirty there." Yes, I'm like, "Oh, come You're on." You're looking a little bit Marbach nice. Look Marbach right, right nice. Now. I'm looking Puro, bro. This is the Puro in Paris look. Yeah, exactly. And I, I wasn't <laughs> gonna get my hair long enough to get an Edgar. And speaking of Edgars, uh, the Fiesta next year at Market Square apparently is gonna look different oh, because yeah, SAPD Chief uh, McManus came out yesterday and said changes will be made. We were talking about this. Two people killed, four women shot uh, at uh, Market Square on Saturday night as the uh, Fiesta events were coming to a close. Um, apparently, there's going to be security checks for weapons. I don't know if that means pat-downs. I don't know if that means metal detectors, but apparently that's going to be the case over yeah. there. And then also, already you couldn't bring in ice chests anymore. Nope, not anymore. Now, your bags are going to be searched, and there might be a rule about having clear bags out there as opposed to, you know, just bringing a backpack. Or, or a purse of a certain size right. and shape, you know? So things are looking to be a little bit different. Now, McManus went out and said that the shooting that went down was beef, as he said, between two people. <clears throat> it wasn't one of those things where uh, just something kind of broke out over there that these Random. people knew yeah. each other. Uh, 18-year-old uh, was uh, one of the one of them that was killed was 18 years old had been arrested for multiple felonies just a few weeks Two ago weeks and ago. was on the news yeah. and people are arguing about the fact that the mother set up a GoFundMe for his funeral. I get it, man. I get it. I it, it's it's so. It's a tra It's a tragedy, dude. Because the kid's so young, and yet stuff like this took him out. You know, I mean, he's a product of his own devices, but you know. A mother still loves her son. Right. She wants to go ahead and bury him, you know, and she needs some help. So I get that. You know, the family wants to come together, friends or whatever, donate to help with the burial. What's there's nothing wrong with that. You yeah. know, what was wrong with the were the actions of not just one individual, of both started firing upon each other, and, cost them their lives. And his mother set up a uh, GoFundMe and was talking yeah. on the news, talking to Ken's five about it. Uh, and, you know, she's asking for five thousand dollars. And has already, I'm, I'm, I have the uh, GoFundMe on there right now. Not that I'm endorsing this, but it's still, just to let you know, 43 people have reached out and donated a total of $1,620 to this guy. This is a guy yeah. that was breaking into cars at La Cantera, breaking into the cars at the rim, was arrested for it. He was called a serial burglar. Okay. Police arrested him and made the news just two or three weeks ago. He had multiple felonies before felonies now and what's interesting is that when i see all these donations almost a third of them are anonymous so people are donating donating either way but uh, i don't think he's going to get the five thousand or the, the family but uh, they're at 1620 they might dude we'll see what happens with them but the thing is with these two back-to-back -back shootings that they have now mm -hmm. at fiesta mcmahon is saying that they're going to bring about changes the only changes that i can see that are going to make any sense would be to section off market square right and just have one entry point and one exit and that way you can check everybody and maybe like they said even have multiple you know checkpoints even if you're going to go see a band play on the stage you have to get checked in just to go ahead and get to that area because they do have market square and then they have the areas under the bridge where they also have you know stages set up where various bands play and whatnot so, again, you know, it's not too hard to, to make it one entry point and then one exit. Well, the, the difficult part would be some of the restaurants there, like La Margarita and Mi Tierra, uh, because they have their own entrances there. 
And if somebody says, oh, I'm just going to the restaurant, and then they're, gonna, then they're going to have to want to get out. They're going to have to close off one of the exits. Also, on the other side of the street, you have the Marriott. Yeah. There's a courtyard Marriott there. And then you have uh, Santa Rosa Hospital. So there's got to be some sort of logistically thing going on there to make I'm this sure happen, make it possible. They can have an entrance that's just for emergency personnel, you know, fire department, you know, police department. EMS. Sith reaches out to us on our YouTube stream saying, Mike, for the love of Christ, roll your R's. I can roll my tongue, baby. That's what she said. Look at Jesse A. They should do it like they like Niosa. There were officers at, officers at each entry checking bags. That's so, right. There you That's go. That's right. So uh, I mentioned <clears throat> that I was at um, Jazz Fest in New Orleans this past weekend. Yeah. Got to go see the Killers perform. It was the fifth time I'd seen them perform. And I made a joke to my daughter that I want to go back this weekend, <laughs> right? Because yeah. uh, that was week one. So week one, you had the Killers perform. So it's jazz music, but they have all types of music over there. You know, they've got uh, gospel. They've got uh, blues. They've got rock and all sorts of things over there. It's a celebration of cultures. And if anybody has an opportunity to go to Jazz Fest in New Orleans, do it. The music there is amazing. So the Killers were the, were the, the Headline. headliners. Yeah. Uh, Chris Stapleton was also a headliner. Hey, guy's got a great voice, He's man. He's got a great voice. So this weekend, the headliners are the Foo Fighters nice. and the Rolling Stones. <laughs> okay. How can you go wrong? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're of a certain age, you're going there. I you mean, know? $90 to go watch them perform. Bro, that's I mean, cheap, that's man. nothing, right? So I made the joke that I wanted to go. My daughter called me five minutes before I came to your house and was like, Dad, I got tickets to the Foo Fighters. Oh, Dad, you are, you, are you coming back, Dad? Are you coming back? So now I've got to figure out how I'm going to handle that on Friday if, in fact, I do go back on Friday. And, and I wouldn't want it to be where it's like I'm there for days at a time because, to be honest with you, I'm tired, man. Mm -hmm. I went to Charlotte for a few days, went, came home. Do going to Charlotte, flying over there, and then when I went to New Orleans, I drove, and I drove back. Yeah. Now, I did get a little bit of help from family on the way to and from, but I drove maybe about 75% of the way. I'm tired, dude. Physically oh, yeah. right now, I, bet. I am tired. And I know yeah. I'm trying to get back into my diet. <laughs> New Orleans is not a place to be if you want to diet. Okay? You could be eating beignets, drinking coffee, you know, <laughs> getting some deep fried. Yeah, man. <laughs> Tim Gonzalez is out and says, Tennessee whiskey. Great there song. There you go. Hey, Tennessee whiskey is undefeated, man. It's That's always a it. classic, dude. Great song. Great, great thing to drink, man. Great song. Hard song to sing. If you if you have the cojones, man. To sing this karaoke, yeah. I'm buying you a drink. No, man, that's a little bit ballsier <laughs> than I thought. Sam Salinas reaches out and says, oh, yeah, I hear the Killers jazz sets are amazing. Oddly enough, it's not so much a jazz set. They had a Caribbean-type feel of an album, their third one called Day and Age, which has the song Human, uh, Losing Touch, and all that stuff. The songs in the middle of that album have a lot of saxophone in it, a lot of... A lot of instrumentation in there that is beyond the synths and the guitars. Yeah. Look at Mike going to grow the dreads now. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, I went to Jamaica a year and a half ago. Didn't do it then. Won't do it now. Sith reaches out and says, I'll bring the weed. I'm in. Dude, it was already there in New Orleans, man. I At Jazz Fest, dude. People Look at were lighting Sith. up. He would do this, dude, because you hate when guys do this. He says, Joe, when I'm drunk, I'll sing Whitney Houston. I can knock it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I believe him because Sith is very much every woman. He's oh. every woman. No, it's only Lord, him. Man. So very nice. Are we going to talk about sports today or just like just no. yes, the talk, rest of the day? We'll talk about sports. You know, I mean, because there's so much going on. So now I have to go online and go because do I fly into New Orleans or do I fly into Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge, the Baton Rouge airport only has four gates. It's even tinier than the San Antonio <laughs> Four <airport>. gates. <laughs> they have two American and two United. Jeez. Yes. Oh, that bro. is all. That is it. Are you getting, I mean, do they even have the, the landing strip for the freaking 747s, you know, or 737s? Yeah. I dude, mean, dude, there was, there was one time I was doing some freelance work in Bakersfield, California, and I had to do some work in Bakersfield and Fresno, and it was in the, it was for the uh, Cesar Chavez family, oh, and, like, yeah. their organization. Yeah. And, uh, dude, it was hotter than hell over there, going up and down the fields. And I did not want to be there. But what was funny is that I flew into either Fresno or Bakersfield, California. And the person who checked 
who like greeted me at the door of the airport yeah was the same person who got me my ticket was the same person <laughs> who got me through tsa Damn. was the same person who got my ticket to, at the gate was the same person who greeted me at the top of the plane Jeez. was the same person who offered me a drink oh lord i'm like is it are, do you have quadruplets are you do you have brothers it was the same dude. And you were going to say that same person was also on the plane as the yeah. stewardess. I was like, damn. <laughs> I, I one time took a flight from, uh, I had to do a, another freelance job in Iowa. And going into Iowa, uh, it was, it, the plane reminded me of the Cleveland Indians plane from Major League. <laughs> oh my because God. Because I took a nice <laughs> flight into Chicago, but then I had to go from Chicago to Iowa. And uh, I had never been on a plane before that had propellers. A prop plane. <laughs> <laughs> they came up to me, and I see these guys going, brr, brr, like, oh, like, like me with the lawnmower, God. like hit the primer, hit the primer yeah. button. You know, they're just like trying to, to twirl it to go. It was a crazy, man. Oh, crazy. man. I would have jumped off that plane. I'm like, you know what? I'm good, bro. Dude, my, my uh, old boss one time flew me from San Antonio to McAllen in one of his in a Cessna oh yes the little small engine planes dude it was like a flying suv Jeez, and i bro. hated it i hated every minute you talk of about it. getting sick dude those things are prone to like all sorts of turbulence because it's like a little aluminum <laughs> you hit a thin piece of aluminum that separates you from the outside world you hit a pocket in the in the clouds yeah and you drop 100 <laughs> feet in a second whoa <laughs> you think your life is coming to an end and I thought about it. I look too much like Richie Valens, and that guy looked too much like hey, man. like Buddy Holly for me to have done this. Speaking of which, dude, they just had a plane crash uh, yesterday. They came out on the news, man. Several people uh, perished, dude. They died. Where at? Uh, here near San Antonio, man. On the oh, outskirts. was it was it a small plane? Small plane, man. Small engine plane. You know, when you only have a, when you only have one engine, you only got one engine, dude. Yeah, dude. That's if it, it goes out, you you're in trouble, man. Yeah, we ain't doing the movie Flight, which is oh, a great movie, by God, the way, with, with Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. Uh, dude was drunk and high, uh, piloting the plane. Okay, first of all, whoever that nugget was at the beginning of the movie who played the uh, flight attendant. Oh God, I know you're talking about. Hard ten, dude. <laughs> I think her name is Nadine Velasquez, I believe is her name. Yeah. Hard 10. The dude. one waking up next to Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he turns the plane over, yeah. right? Uh, I, I heard this theory about that movie is that uh, he and the redhead, the girl who plays Beth in Yellowstone, oh. that they're really dead the entire time and that they're hallucinating this whole thing. Uh, but good movie i mean it's one of those things where you look at it and go well, maybe that's where they were going with it yeah uh, but flight was a really really good movie yeah so uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about sports now we're going to talk about do we have to do we have to we have do we to. have to we have to but i wanted to talk about trump going to jail possibly oh okay you want to talk about that before we get into the nba we'll talk? Do that a little bit later man because a judge threatened donald trump with jail time oh, today he see jail if time. he violates a gag order again found him in in a contempt of uh, of uh, or violation of a gag order eight times or nine times today, find a thousand dollars for each of the nine nine thousand dollars and says you do it again. Oh, by the way, erase all of these true social posts. You do it again, you go to jail. You know what he? What's life going to be like if that happens? Oh, dude, they're going to put him in house arrest in Mar-a-Lago, dude. No, they're saying in New York. That How they is would... he going to be put in jail by himself? Like you said, Let's... they're going to put him and and what? Some Secret Service agent. Yes, exactly, bro. <laughs> Come on. Come on. All right, we'll get back into that in a little bit later. But uh, let's talk about the, some sports. Last night, the Lakers fell to the uh, Denver Nuggets and lost that series. It was a gentleman's sweep. They lost in five. Um. I saw an interesting stat that said that the Lakers led 65% of the series and lost in five. Yeah, and they were up by double digits, and I think more than one of those games, a couple of those games. Yeah. A um, couple of things about this game and, and just about the way that, they, that it was being played. Uh, Denver's not playing well, man. Uh, Jokic is a turnover machine. What was he doing last night? Last I saw, he had seven turnovers, mm -hmm. and he is trying to do these, these touchdown passes down the field. It's almost as though he's such a good passer that now he believes he can thread the needle every single time, and it was annoying. But last night we saw LeBron James. They lost by uh, a bucket. Uh, uh, there was a, a, a bucket made with a couple seconds to go to basically end the game. Jamal Lakers Murray. Had Jamal Murray. Lakers had no timeouts, and it was like a half-court yeah. heave to try to win the game. That was a stupid-ass rule, though. I agree with Charles Barkley in his comments last night because he was saying, 
How is it that the coach of the Lakers, Ham, right? Yeah, Darvin Ham. He went ahead and challenged a play that was critical for the Lakers, right? And they had called a, uh, a foul on AD on the Joker. And they said after they reviewed it, no, it's not a foul. Lakers get possession of the ball. <laughs> they lost their last time out of the game on that damn call. So it's like, how do you win the challenge but still lose the timeout? That's, that's kind of stupid. It's not like the timeout would have made a difference right. in the game, but it would have given them at least a shot. It would have given them a shot. And, yeah. and that play right there, is that the play where, uh, where uh, Jokic was, was stuffed? Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, it, was, it was called a foul. Uh, by the way, uh, that, was a, that was a clean block. I mean, the, the official said it correctly. He was saying, you know, left arm was on the body, but not enough to affect the shot. This is, yeah. a, this is a physical game. Not enough uh, contact. Some, some phrasing that they use. Right. Yeah. Nuggets won 108 to 106. Jokic almost had a 2020 triple-double. Uh, that dude is, is one of the best in the league, man. Three times. He'll be named MVP sometime in the next week or so. 25 points, 20 rebounds, had nine assists, almost had a triple-double. Uh, but the thing is, man, he's a turnover machine. Seven turnovers yesterday. He had seven turnovers, but this is what I'm going, where I'm going, coming at. And it wasn't just him. It was the rest of the squad as well. They were turnover prone early on in the game. And I think that's more indicative of the Lakers figuring them out a little bit, right. you know, learning their idiosyncrasies, where they're going to pass the ball and how to cover certain guys, doing certain switches, you know, stuff like that. So I think that has more to do with the Lakers kind of figuring the Nuggets out because I bet you the Nuggets – when they move on and they play the Wolves now, right? they're going to kind of be the Nuggets well, again. Well, that's where I wanted to get yeah. because uh, Sam Salinas reaches out to us and says that they knew that they were going to beat the Lakers. They just did enough to basically win, that they were messing around. D'Lo says that uh, MPJ, uh, Porter Jr., uh, has one of the sweetest uh, looking jump he shots does, in the man. league. Dude, Aaron Gordon. Is, he, is that guy any good? No. I mean, Aaron Gordon, uh, what does he do out there other than miss bunnies? He misses easy shot after easy shot. The guy looks like a caveman. And if he isn't yeah, dunking man. the ball, it ain't going through the hoop. I think he's just out there to try to go ahead and play some defense and get some, some rebounds. Yeah. You know, that's he's, he's, about he, it. He does the dirty work. Yeah, exactly. Jamal Murray was questionable going into the game. It was a game-time decision. Went out there 13 for 28, yeah, 32 he had a, points. a strained uh, calf muscle. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to sit him out. But he was saying he got emotional when they told him he couldn't play because he's like, I'm not missing this damn game. I'm going to go out there and play with my brothers. Y'all are going to have to figure it out. But I'm going out there, you know. So it was a difference maker because he was able to contribute, uh, you know, to the to the Nuggets dispatching the Lakers because he had the final game winning shot. And it was a beautiful play by the Nuggets, by the way, because this is a ballsy play. Mm -hmm. If you make this shot. You win the game. If you miss it, man, you might be going to <laughs> overtime. Anything can yeah. happen. But, man, the Nuggets have proven that they can win games in crucial moments. Dude. They, they played well yesterday. What, what worries me about the Nuggets is they're a five-man team. That is it. They don't go to the bench for crap. Aaron Gordon, 46 minutes played. Porter Jr., 46 minutes. Jokic, 41. Murray, 41 minutes. They don't go to the bench at no. all. If they go into a seven-game series, because they dispatched the Heat last year in five, they were able to do stuff like that. If you close people out in five, you can do this. If it's a seven-game series and it's back and forth, uh, it's a little bit more difficult. Lakers last night, LeBron James uh, played 44 minutes. Back is 39 years old. He averaged over 40 minutes played this it's series. amazing, dude. 30 points yesterday, 11 of 21. He made, almost had a triple-double. Made clutch free throws, 11 assists, 9 rebounds. You know, this is the hard part about it all, man. He's going to be 40 years old going into next season. People are asking the question, is this his last game? No, okay, because he's going to do what what Kareem did back in the day where he's going to want to get the gifts from all the different get his roses. cities, get his roses and all that stuff. So he will play at age 40 next year. Is he going to be the like Robert Parrish, the big chief, going out there still yeah. playing well into your your prime? You know, well, LeBron is still a top ten player in the NBA, and you can make the argument that he's still a top five. He's still a hell of a player for at thirty nine. Thirty nine. They say Father Time's undefeated. Father Time is on the ropes right now. Bro, I saw guy. LeBron last night 
go through like four Nuggets defenders, dude. Yeah. He had four guys draped all over him, still made the shot. There was a play <laughs> early in the fourth quarter where they handed the ball off at Le- to LeBron, like, you know, uh, inbound pass. He took it the length of the court for a three-point play, and he was like a bull. He just like ran through it all. The defender got scared, turned to the side, which made it an illegal defensive position. The collision ha- happened, and LeBron banks it. it. Dude, he went three seconds, just the length of the floor in three seconds, and banked it for a three-point play. He is still remarkable. And it's funny because you go online right now, you go to Twitter or whatnot, and you hear the names LeBum, you know, LaFraud, yeah. and... People hate the argument that LeBron James is the GOAT, right? And I have a Twitter poll out there right now, uh, at MJ Acquired Taste, basically asking the question, do you believe that he's the GOAT? And I gave some options here. I gave an option is he's either the GOAT, a top three player all time, yeah. top five player all time, or a top ten player all time. I'm not going to entertain the idea that he's beyond ten, okay? If, if, if you are calling him outside the top ten, then you're just being dumb. Okay, he's a top 10 player certified, right? Right now, we had 122 people who have voted in the past hour. Right now, 16% say he's the GOAT. 40% say that he is top three. 22% top five. 22% top 10. So the belief is, is that, uh, you know, if you look at it right there, that's 56% of those responding saying that he's top five, uh, top three at the best or at the worst. And then you have about 78% saying he's top five at worst. Yeah. So we have a new feature here, by the way. So now when, uh, well, now, right now, if you're able to comment, your comments will come up in real time and we can see them here. Nice. So. So the thing about it is this, is that I have this conversation with my dad. We were driving back home from, uh, from New Orleans. Yeah. And, you know, lots of conversation pieces. And we start talking about sports. Sorry. And, and we start talking about sports. And I mentioned LeBron James. And my dad hates LeBron James. Can't stand Does him. He? And there are a lot of people who hate him. And they call him a crybaby. And they call him all sorts of things about, you know, because, you know, he, if he doesn't get the call, he doesn't get the call. He gets pissed off. Right. But I was telling my dad that that LeBron James is a freak of nature that we've never seen before and never will see again. In the sense that he came into the league at what, 18? He's 39, still a top five player in the NBA. On top of that, think about all the playoff series that he played, all the finals that he played. The number of minutes that this guy has played has not been 21 years worth of minutes. He's played like 30 years worth of minutes. Yeah, yeah. The guy is ridiculous at what he's been able to do. Four-time champion. Four-time finals MVP. Four-time MVP. 20-time All-Star. Three-time NBA All-Star game MVP. 13-time All-NBA first team. Three-time second team. Three-time third team. Five-time All-NBA defensive first team. He was rookie of the year. He was an NBA scoring champion. He was also an assist leader one season. And that guy is the all-time leader in points scored over 40,000. Do you realize that he will next year have the equivalent number of points as David Robinson times two? And that's And David Robinson good. is a Hall of Famer with more than 20,000 points. Yeah, there's no argument LeBron's going to be in the Hall of Fame. So any argument LeBron is beyond top five? No, no, that's not it. I, I have a hard time arguing that he's not even top three because I think that he's at least top three. Yeah. Because to me, that would be Kareem, Michael, LeBron. In whatever order you want to put it in, I think those are the three. Yeah, okay. And the idea that he cries, he does cry. Yeah, he whines but, but, a lot. But, but look at this. Who else were criers? Michael Jordan was a crybaby. LeBron James is a crybaby. Kobe Bryant was a crybaby. Magic Johnson, oh my God, was a crybaby. Tim Duncan was a crybaby. But the thing is, social media didn't exist back then. 
You know, right. with the advent of social media, what does everybody do? Make these memes, put these little gifts out there, get these little clips of him complaining to the refs, you know? Right. And the thing, this is what it gets, this is what it comes down to. Is LeBron James the most hated athlete out there? Because it seems like everybody likes to see him fail. Right. He is hated because he's so good. Yeah. That, that's a testament to how good he is. Midtown reaches out to us and says, Timmy, Kobe, Jordan, Shaq, Bill Russell, Wilt ahead of LeBron. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, some of them are, some of them aren't. I mean, you have the argument about Bill Russell, and I was telling my dad, I was like, when Russell was winning titles, there was only nine teams in the league. So it's different, right? Yeah. It, it's absolutely different. Look at that comment yeah. by JHNSB. It's also the idea he creates super teams. Well, that's no lie detected because... He did that with Miami. Yeah, the the decision. The decision, and you know that they all colluded to do it. And you oh, know how I know, you know how I know that they colluded to do this? It's for the same reason that Wemby let the ha- the cat out of the bag the other day when they were saying, hey, man, uh, have other players approached you about playing with of you? Of course. And he goes, oh, you know, I have some people who've reached out, you know. And is that allowed? No. But Wemby said it anyway, you know. It happens. It's like you can't talk amongst your friends. Exactly. You know, like your friends. Hey, man, it'd be cool to play with you, you know, but is that collusion? <laughs> JH is reaching out saying LeBron tried to patent the phrase Taco Tuesday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that. that he lost because there was, <laughs> there, was some, there was some restaurant in the Northeast that's not even in a Mexican or, 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 or Latin area that, that, that coined that it. phrase. And then they, they lost that phrase later on because, um, uh, you know, they gave it up, I guess you could say. Uh, LeBron James, he is polarizing because of, I mean, the guy is arrogant. The guy lies all the time, man. Oh, God. One of my favorite memes is, you ever see him reading books? He's always on the first page. You never see him hold a book where he's like halfway through. you know. And then he lies about certain things, man. He embellishes so much about who he is and where he's at. What I didn't like about LeBron James is that when they asked him growing up, hey, who are the teams you cheered for growing up? He goes, the Cowboys, the Yankees, and the Lakers. The teams that, win, that won championships. He was a bandwagon fan. Yeah, and he has a a player option. I believe it's fifty four million to stay in L A. this year. He's gonna stay with L A. He's not going anywhere else, man. Yeah. LeBron also lied about Migos, dude. He said that he had been listening to Migos since his first year with the Heat, and the problem <laughs> was the Migos didn't exist. exist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, you tried too hard. Oh man. my god, you know B- Migos, dude. <laughs> Migos is not music that I that I that I search for, but whenever it comes out, dude, I get excited, man. Rest <laughs> in peace to one of those members of Migos yeah, back in the rip. day. But uh, goodness, but LeBron James is easily top three, easily top three. And then the argument is, well, he doesn't have the rings. Tim has five, and LeBron has four. Dude, if we're gonna use that argument, then Robert Ori, you know, is a greater player than both of them, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is with LeBron. Or Bill, or Bill Russell's the greatest of all time. Yeah. The thing with LeBron, though, is how many times has he been to the finals? You know, I know that a lot of people will gauge him on the wins, but he's gone to the finals numerous times, and it's, it's hard to get there. And he's done it with several different teams, you know? So, so I'm looking at this right now. Um, this is according to basketballreference.com. Number of minutes played all time in the NBA. He's number two. Jeez, dude. He's, he's had a lot of wear and tear, man. And that's not including playoffs. Because if you included playoffs, he's, he's that guy. Jeez. The most minutes played all time is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 57,446. And what did you say about Kareem? He's the, he's the GOAT. He's the GOAT, right? That's what <laughs> you say. He's the GOAT. <laughs> LeBron James has 56,597 minutes played. He's trails by 849, right? So he plays about 38 minutes a game. He plays 22 ga- uh, uh, games next year. He'll break the all-time record. By the way, top 10 all-time when it comes to NBA minutes played. Kareem, LeBron at number three, Carl Malone. Number four, Dirk Nowitzki. Number five, Kevin Garnett. Six, Jason Kidd. Seven, Elvin Hayes. Eight, Kobe. Nine, Will Chamberlain, and ten, John Stockton. Tim Duncan is number 12 on that list with 47,000-plus minutes played yeah. all time. 
he, he's if you want to make the argument that he's a goat, you can make that argument. That's how good he is. I don't think, it, in it, my opinion, watching them both play, Michael Jordan was more clutch than LeBron. Michael Jordan, to me, is still the better player. Michael Jordan, um, I mean, that's part of my youth, you know, is watching Michael it's Jordan It's those play. battles in the playoffs back then, man. It's a different time, you know? And I can't compare the eras. I can only compare what said players have done, but I'm still comparing what Michael Jordan was able to do compared to LeBron. And Michael Jordan, had he had not taken that break, he would have had a couple more rings there. Could have had a couple more rings. You he, know? he was probably burned out, to be honest with you. He, I mean, he was going through a lot. His dad passed away. Right. You know, his dad was a big part of his life. He needed a break. But the longevity of it all. I mean, think about the fact that LeBron James has 8,000 more points than Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan's number five all time. You know, and it's it's beyond points, dude. You know, he this is a guy that is also one of the biggest all-time assist leaders of all time he's not even a point guard lebron james is fourth all-time in, in assists the only three players in nba history have more assists than lebron james are john stockton jason kidd and chris paul lebron yeah. james has more assists than every other player in the nba other than those three john stockton one of the dirtiest players in the nba you low can't key. change my mind low key can't change my mind Sam says that LeBron lost the finals. Name the years that he lost the finals. History doesn't like a loser. They remember 2007. They remember 2014. Now, here's the thing. 2014, that's a tough loss because you have, you know, Bosh and you have Dwayne Wade, the greatness there. LeBron's team in 2007 sucked, dude. That Cavs team would have been like the five seed or six seed they got in swept. the West. Yeah, man. That team sucked. It was LeBron James and Scrubs. Yeah. That's what the Spurs are trying to do right now, yeah. trying to get back in the playoffs. It's Wemby and Scrubs. It was LeBron James, Anderson Varejao, and a whole bunch of other Scrubs. <laughs> Anderson Varejao. Remember Sideshow Bob? He had that big old mullet and that big old fro <laughs> going all over the place. I want to I want to look that up, dude. 2007 Cavaliers to Cavaliers roster. Let, let let's see this poo poo platter that made the uh, <laughs> oh, that God. made the NBA you got it on there? I, I have it right here. Jeez. Uh, they were 52 and 30. They had uh, Shannon Brown, Daniel Gibson, Drew Good, and Larry Hughes, Zedrunas Algoskas, LeBron James, Damian Jones, Devontae Jones, or Dwayne Jones, rather, Daniel Marshall, Ira Newby, Sasha Palovich, Scott Pollard, Eric Snow, God. Anderson Verajao, David <laughs> Wesley. The fact that he took this team to the NBA Finals, even though they got swept, but with scrubs. And then here in San Antonio... At what was called the AT and T Center back in the day, you had him cramp up with the AC. Le cramp, <laughs> le cramp, the infamous incident. You know, <laughs> somebody turned off the AC. Everybody suffered. Yeah. You know what? You were filled with a bunch of people in the stadium right at the time. Yeah. No one got cramps except for LeBron. Because he does so much, man. <laughs> he does so much. I still remember him crying, and they had to kind of like pick him up. His teammates did. And take him off the court. I'm like, bro, you're so dramatic. <laughs> both you got cramps in both your legs, bro. Just, just walk out. The, just get up and walk off. You got to stretch it out, man. If you just let it just sit there, you got to rub it out. You got to do something, man. So uh, also in the NBA playoffs last night, the Oklahoma City Thunder advanced. They got the brooms out and swept the New Orleans Pelicans. They beat them 87. Sorry, 97 to 89 yesterday. Uh, Williams with 24 points, eight rebounds for OKC. I saw a stat, by the way, that I found to be interesting. One was, this is the youngest team to ever, ever win an NBA playoff series. And this, is, this team, Joe, had only one bucket scored the entire series by somebody over the age of 25. Dude, what's going on in OKC right now is special. Yeah, man, OKC is able to go ahead and do some amazing things right now. You know, they're a young team, though, so they're going to get tested. The second round of the playoffs gets a little harder, gets interesting. But when you get to that Western Conference Finals, that's all. That's a whole different ball game. You're at another level if you made it there. Yeah, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Denver's playing Minnesota next. Uh, that is going to be one hell of a series, dude. <laughs> 
I like JH and SNB's uh, comment here. When you're naming the scrubs, yeah. look what he says. Still better than our current Spurs. <laughs> 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 Is he lying? Is he lying? <laughs> No, not at all, dude. But I'm, uh. I'm, I'm looking at the brackets for the playoffs right now because uh, we're going to have a series going on between Denver and Minnesota. Dude, if I had a bet on this series, give me the Timberwolves. Give me the Timberwolves. Give me that defense right there that is anchored by Rudy Gobert, who's going to be named Defensive Player of the Year in the next week or so. Hey, look at Seth, what he says. He says, Ant is the next MJ. Hey, Could man. be. Could be. That kid is a star in the making right there. That kid's got some game, man. Mm -hmm. He's nasty, dude. And uh, this is a team that has an identity for defense, man. Carl yeah. Anthony Towns. Ant, Ant, Ant going up to Carl Anthony Towns in that post-game conference the other day, and he was like, what did I tell you? You stay out of foul trouble, we win. That's it. Whenever we lose is when you're in foul trouble. He called out his own player Yeah, and says, we need you on the court because we lose when you are in foul trouble. We win when you're not. And he looked at him and goes, how many fouls did you have today? He goes, just three. Right, which means you are still on the court. And he's telling this, having a conversation with, with, with Kat while talking to the reporters Yeah, in, in the press conference. And I found that to be funny. But, man, Ant is so good. So now you've got – this battle down low you've got cat and gobert against Jokic. you've got jamal murray going up against ant damn this is a very very good matchup here both of these teams high basketball iqs yeah. and they both play i mean the the timberwolves are a better defensive team but the nuggets can also play good defense you know when it matters right at the end of games you know to go ahead and and be able to ink out a win. The Nuggets are one of these teams that's like, they got nine lives, bro. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're like up by 20. They just chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away. And then midway through the fourth quarter, things start getting interesting. They go on a run. And before you know it, they got the lead on you. Yeah. And you got to go for their heart, man. Dude, you you, you got to so step on them, step at the back of the neck. And, and the Lakers didn't do it yesterday. They yeah. didn't do it at all the entire series. They, they get had, up by 10 points. The Lakers had opportunities, Mike. The problem is those shots didn't fall. At, at, the, at the very end. Yeah. And then at last minute of the game yesterday, what's Austin Reeves doing? Going for a bucket. That's LeBron's ball to shoot. Austin Reeves the missed the bunny, dude. It was right there, man. Yeah, I mean, he was trying to do it over uh, Jokic, but still. And he missed it, man. He missed it. He, he, he kind of double clutched it. Like, I think he was up in the air going, what the hell he am was I like, doing? Oh, Why am I doing this? <laughs> uh, three teams have already advanced to the West. OKC, Minnesota, and Denver. Uh, game five tomorrow between the Clippers yeah. and Mavericks. That's destined to go seven. Let's just wait till game seven for that one. Yeah. On the Eastern Conference, uh, you have um, games tonight, Orlando and Cleveland. The series is tied at two apiece. You also have the Bucks and Pacers. The Pacers trying to, trying to trying to get rid of the Bucks Again, no Dame Lillard, no Giannis Antetokounmpo. It is bad, bad, bad. Also tonight, the Knicks are going to have an uh, opportunity to take out the Sixers tonight. doesn't matter where they play, man. It's a home court advantage for the Knicks, yeah. even in Philadelphia. Yeah, now we can actually show, like I said, the chat here, so... Oh, nice. As everybody starts to, you know, put the chat in there, starts to come in in real time, man. So yep, it's yep. always nice I, to I, see. I like, I, you know, it's always about the, the new technology that you have yeah. here, which is very cool, man. Very cool. You know, one of the things that we need to start getting into, I don't know if you can share it there on your screen, but if you go to, I think it was uh, NBA on TNT, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see the gone fishing segments. We got to show that, man. They're pretty funny. They had the Pelicans and the Lakers both. On a beach somewhere in Galveston, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal. That was brutal. You know, uh, let's, let's go to Brian Windhorst. I can't find it, by the way. Oh, that Brian Windhorst is going to be on. If you go to the X and you go on ESPN, uh -huh. at ESPN NBA, you'll see it there. You got to kind of scroll down a little bit, and you're going to see the Brian Windhorst, uh, Pat McAfee. Uh, where it's on the Pac McAfee show, so you'll be able to see that. Right. So Brian Windhorse, um, you know, he, he the guy follows Wemby around, right? Yeah. He's been in the back pocket of LeBron James for the better part of a decade. He's now with ESPN, falling around. He's now on the Wemby beat, if you will. He goes back and forth. He's either covering LeBron or he's covering Wemby. 
And on the Pat McAfee show, Pat asked the question, so, uh, you know, what's going to go on this, this off summer when it comes to the Spurs, when it comes to different teams? And he didn't really talk about the Spurs, but Brian Windhorst has brought it up. He was, and I can't find it, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's but, see. I can find it. Go ahead. But either way, um, Brian Windhorst was asked a question about the future this offseason, and he was saying, don't be surprised if the Spurs do something to bring in a good free agent to play with Wemby. And he was saying it's not going to be a superstar, but it's going to be a tier two level type of player. Yeah. And they were asking all these different names and then they brought up the question. They, they brought up Dame Lillard and Winhorse shot it down saying, nope, that contract's too expensive. It's too long. That's not the one. But then they asked the question, well, what about Trey Young? And Winhorse was like, that's an interesting name. And he just smiled. Dude, that says a lot, man. Wayne Horse is the guy. Remember, remember this, uh, Joe? Remember this? When Wayne Horse starts doing this, you know something is going on. He knows something, dude. Wayne Horse has been here talking to Brian Wright. He knows something. And maybe it's not Trey Young. Maybe it's DeJounte Murray. But he knows something. Yeah, and there's the clip there. Go ahead and play it. I don't know if I can. That's the thing. I could show it to you, but I can't play it because I have to. Yeah. I'm, the way the technology works is that we're actually in another browser. Yeah. So it's not like I'm sharing Wait, my screen. Wayne fits into the box. He's lost some weight. No, that's because they zoomed out on the brother. When they zoom in on him, <laughs> he can't fit in the box, bro. So they, they're talking about LeBron James's future, what's going to happen. He was saying, dude, LeBron's not going anywhere. He's going to be a Laker, yada, yada, yada. And then, again, they asked the question, well, what about other types of free agents out there? Who, who are the Lakers going to get? And he, and he changes the subject and goes, well, let's talk about the Spurs. Let's talk about Victor Wembanyama. Who wants to play with Wemby? Because free agents want to. Somebody's going to step up. That, yeah. that was his point. Somebody is going to step up. And when Trey Young's name was mentioned, he just smiled. He just smiled. Like, I know something, but I can't say something. Yeah, he just said Trey Young, and he was like, that, that's an interesting name. You know, I think it's just rumors, basically, what he's hearing. Maybe there is some interest there, but the asking price, like I said before, is quite high. There, 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 there is. That's an interesting name. And, and, and McAfee just loses his mind there. He goes, you're telling us something. You're telling us something. By the way, I was watching Pat McAfee show yesterday. That dude who uh, played for the Packers there, what's his name? The one that sits there all silent. Oh, the one with the weird ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he was actually talking yesterday. Wow. That Maybe was, somebody finally said... Poked him with the stick and said, do something. You awake? <laughs> you know who talks a lot on that show? And it, Actually, the guy's quite knowledgeable about sports. Is the one with the mullet. I don't know what his name is. Yeah. But the guy on the Pat McAfee show, the one with the mullet, that guy, he, he, he's on there, man. He's, he's a talking head, dude. Like, McAfee will bounce things off of him. Him and the other guy, they kind of, you know, go back and forth. But that other friend that he has on there, it's like, why is this guy here, man? <laughs> So, yes, people are ahead uh, of a fist and Chris Gonzalez saying that's A.J. Hawk. A.J. Yeah, Hawk. Jeez. Of. He's terrible, was man. He, was he better as a Packers player? Was he better as the Pat McAfee guy? Or was he better in Pitch Perfect 2? Oh, Pitch Perfect 2. I forgot about that. Remember? <laughs> he had a line in that jeez, movie. Jeez, bro. God, I love that movie. I love all the Pitch Perfect movies. You, hey, you would watch that because we they always make fun of you. They're like, zoom, 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 Mike zoom, watches zoom. all these chick flicks. Well, because I have daughters, man. <laughs> of course, and growing man. up, we watched them. We watched Mean Girls. We Bro, watched Pitch Perfect. I've had to watch Mean Girls with my daughter. My daughter, oh my God, she kills me, man. She'll probably hear this and get mad at me. She's made me watch 50 first dates. I can't even remember how many times. <laughs> I like in a, I can already quote you every line from that movie. And the other thing she does sometimes, if she's here at the house and she's just wanting to chill with me, she makes me sit on the sofa with her, and she'll sit right next to me, and she puts on Say Yes to the Dress. Nice. And I'm like, can I go already? We've been watching this for like two hours. Dude, have you been, have you been tricked into watching Is It Cake? No, nah, Or bro. Cake Wars? Oh, my God. I, don't, I haven't watched that. No, just don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah. Hey, uh, switch to boxing. Mike Tyson. Jake Paul. It's going to count, baby. It's going to count. And the last time Mike Tyson won a boxing match, if you were born that day, you're old enough to now drink. God. 
That was 2003. So this whole exhibition between the YouTube prize fighter Jake Paul and Iron Mike Tyson, the exhibition's no longer an exhibition. It's going to count, and it's going to be an eight-round bout. Two-minute rounds, Joe. Not three-minute rounds. Oh, I know that. I God know forbid that. we have a boxing match with three-minute rounds. Two-minute rounds. But what did they say? I mean, Mike Tyson put this up on the X, on his own personal X yeah. profile, and he put that Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson is actually now a sanction. It's going to be sanctioned as a pro fight. So the question is, back to the viewers, who do you all got? This is going to be two-minute rounds. It's going to be sanctioned as a pro fight. What do you think is going to happen here? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, he needs to qualify, which means he needs to pass drug tests in the state of Texas. Oh, not only that. Because this is taking place over up in Jerry World. He's got to also make the weight. Got to make the weight. Uh, Mike Tyson coming in at 50 and 6. Hasn't won a bout in uh, 21 years. Uh, he uh, fought decently about four years ago when he played uh, fought against Roy Jones Jr. in an eight-round exp- uh, exhibition. Uh, exhibition. It was a split draw. Uh, But it wasn't on his record. So this one right here is going to be on the record here, right? So this could be Tyson's 51st win. It could be his seventh loss. Again, Jake Paul's come in at age 27. When the fight starts on July 20th, Mike Tyson will be 58. So there's a 31-year difference. Dude, come on, man. I don't want to see this because I see all all these clips of Mike Tyson. Look how great he looks. And they're all they're all edited like within he's two or three got, seconds he's still got hands bro he's still got hands he's got hands for like eight seconds man i don't know i don't i don't see it happening but here's the problem with jake paul jake paul has been in fights right he's fought against legitimate boxers you know yeah. but the problem is is that he's fighting these guys that are past their prime or guys that are just starting out. What's you know? Mike Tyson? He's 30 years past his prime. I got that. Mike Tyson is an old fighter, but Mike Tyson is a different breed of fighter than Jake Paul's ever faced, even though he's old already. I still give the nod to Tyson because of his experience inside the ring. Mm-hmm. You know, there's that's cert- something that you just can't teach there. You know, in uh, Paul, Paul can no doubt probably keep up with Tyson, you know, he's because right. he's got youth. On his side, he can probably, you know, go the distance. But there's something to be said for experience. And if, if Tyson does box, decides to box, not brawl, I think he, now, he can now box Paul. But if Paul baits him in, hey, let's just have this as a slugfest, it's done. That's all she wrote for him. But if that experience was so long ago, there's no muscle memory to it. No, there, I mean, just you know what to expect because you've been in so many fights. You've been one to know in Fiesta fights. Yeah. You already have an up that on is, another that, guy. That doesn't mean that I have experience, quote unquote. You have experience? If, if, if I went and fought at Nyosa this year. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what we've got to see. That, that, that's what Let's I'm see. saying. Mike, Mike, one and oh in Fiesta fights <laughs> up against the Edgar. <laughs> two, two and one all time. Two and one all time. Oh, uh, God. People reached out to us on our YouTube stream saying that I got it wrong. It wasn't AJ Hawk on Pitch Perfect 2. It was Clay Matthews. That is actually correct. Yeah. Clay Matthews. They're all the same people, dude. It's all the same people. Uh, but at age 58, man, I'm not expecting much from Mike Tyson at all, man. I know we're all going to get nostalgic. But when he gets his ass handed to him, we're all going to look and go, well, he is 58, right? He is 58. So do you think 58 is old for boxing? For boxing? I mean, once you start getting up in your late 30s, that's already old for boxing. Okay. I mean, the exception could be said for Foreman, you know? But, I mean, you're already getting up there in age, man. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Like, LeBron's shown that age is just a number sometimes. You I mean, he's still in great shape and all that. But father time's undefeated, brother. So I asked you the question, do you believe that 58 is old for boxing? Do you think 60 is old for a beauty pageant? God, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Demon show, Mike hour. Show my screen. It's time for Demon Mike time. Oh, here we Let's go. Let's go ahead and introduce you to a lovely woman who is named Alejandra, Alejandra Rodriguez. She is competing in the Miss Argentina universe pageant right so the winner of miss argentina universe goes to the miss universe contest right she looks hot right she's cute 
She's cute, dude. She's for little, 60, I can't believe she's That's six, the thing. The she's neck, 60 years old. The neck kind of tells the story a little bit. She is 60 years old. She's, she's still cute, bro. Now, she's a lawyer, and apparently they changed the rules to Miss Universe over there, where it used to be you had to be between the ages of 18 and 28 to participate. She's like, I'm 60. I'm going to audition. And she won Miss Buenos Aires, right? So I will let you know this, Joe. If you were to ask me, Jimenez, Demon Mike, out of all the ethnicities out there, who has the hottest women? Is it the leggy blonde Russians? Is it the feisty Mexicanas? You know, what is it? The answer is the big booty Colombians. The answer is Argentinian women. Argentinian women are the hottest women in the world, according to Michael Jimenez, and I will die on that hill. <laughs> okay? And what's the capital of Argentina? Buenos Aires. She won Miss Buenos Aires to go into the Miss Universe competition to, again, uh, battle her, her fellow, her fellow country women, if you will, for the, uh, for the honors to go into Miss Universe. Um, she is smoking hot. But she is 60, and she is saying that uh, she thinks that this is a new age when it comes to beauty and in pageants and things like that. Look at Gert. Isn't she competing for Miss Universe? Well, if she wins Miss Argentina, she does. She won her section. She won her city. Oh, my God. Sith always got to make it weird, bro, just like you. Man, who was cute. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> The Joe Biden reference there, I like Look that. Look at Mario Cavazos. I'll on. knock the dust off of that. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, and somebody said, she is not 60. Dude, they, they're built different over there. When, when, when you have... See, here's the thing, man. This is where I get the Charles Barkley in me. In, in me. Oh, God. There are certain areas of the world where being healthy is the norm. And there are certain areas in the world where being unhealthy is the norm. San Antonio is the unhealthy place, right? There's other cities out there like Colorado Springs that are very healthy. Tucson and Phoenix can be very healthy depending on where you're at, Scottsdale, stuff like that. Argentina, because they're, they're so close to the water, man. They're doing all these water activities. They're swimming. They're doing all of that stuff. So, yeah, she's 60s and smoking. Yeah, she's a 10. They said, show me at her 20, though. Show me at her 20. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I like meaning like it, she was 20. But you know what? There's some women who get more attractive as they as they get older. No lies detected, man. But my goodness, she is going to be. Uh, this was big news, man. She won over the weekend. Argentinian lawyer crowned who, Miss Universe Buenos Aires. But who's hotter, her or Salma Hayek? I bet you Salma Hayek still wins. You put them, you know, head to head. I don't know. We got to compare next. <laughs> head to head, <laughs> Salma still wins. And they showed a picture of Salma in her bikini, dude. She's still rocking it, dude. She is, dude. She is. Uh, here, here's some, some, some. Uh, it's all pretty much the same photos of her. Um, I mean, don't be wrong, you know. And and they were saying, by the way, I think it was Dominican Republic, if I'm not mistake, mistaken, that uh, the winner was actually in their 40s that won. So the new rules no longer have to be 18 to 28. You could be of of a of an older age. D Lo reaches out and says Austin is healthy. That's right. Look at Gert. He says, by the way, he's lost seventy five pounds. He's at two oh nine now. Congratulations, man. That's awesome, man. Awesome. I just hey. want to lose fifteen more. Hey, so let's go ahead and pause real quick as we go ahead and give some love to our boy, the one and only Jeff Garcia of the Locked On Spurs podcast. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked on Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked on Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Again. And yesterday, I was going to say, I was the guest on the Locked on Spurs podcast, so you can go watch that replay as we ask the question, should the Spurs be looking at Chris Paul? Interesting point, man, because Chris Paul, 
uh, is going to be out the door there at Golden State. Uh, has never won a ring. Uh, maybe he wants to get into coaching. Chris Paul, arguably one of the greatest point guards of all time. Um, if Can he tutor? Can he mentor a Trey Jones? Can he mentor a Blake Wesley? That's the big question. Uh, I'm today's uh, guest. Nice. And today's question on Locked on Spurs, which, again, you can subscribe on YouTube. You can subscribe on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. Uh, was The question was, who was the most improved Spur this past season? And I narrowed it down to three. And uh, no, so Jeff, Jeff, Jeff chose no. <laughs> Jeff chose one that kind of surprised me. Okay. But again, he'll be dropping that later on today. Also, Jeff Garcia also has an article on Kens5.com talking about Keldon Johnson doing a meet and greet next month in Laredo, Texas. He's going down to the, that's not the valley, right? Laredo's not the valley. He's RGV. Going, he's going South Texas. Okay. To Laredo. So if you want to find out where you can meet Keldon Johnson in Laredo in mid May, go to Kens5.com or go to Jeff Garcia's Twitter account, X account, at Jeff G. Spurzo. Hanover Fist. Because you were asking who's the most improved Spurs player. He says none, none of the above. None of the above. None of the above. Oh, one thing that I am going to work on this week that you should be able to use next week is that little you know deal that you see in front of you with yeah, all the yeah. little buttons yeah that's so i could go ahead and remotely control the show from there if i join you at the table but i'm going to change that since i don't go to the table that often to a bunch of sound effects for you nice so now you'll have sound effects to go along with your takes all right so this is interesting we don't talk politics over here but i found this to be fascinating today uh People ask the question, do you like Biden? Do you like Trump? I think they're both suck. Okay. Jeez. I think the far left sucks. I think the far right sucks. So that's just where I am politically. That being said, that being said, the headline from CNN today, judge threatens jail time if Trump violates gag order again. So, you know, he's under investigation right now. He's under trial right now for... Um, having sex, allegedly, with porn star Stormy Daniels and then using funds to pay her off as hush money. I believe it's $130,000. And this was so that the news would not get out during the 2016 election because it would have derailed his, his campaign and whatnot. He ended up beating Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College. So that being said, uh, he has been pushing all these trials out because, A, he was president for a while, for four years. And then he always files appeal, 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 appeal. Well, now he's finally standing trial, and it's a criminal trial where he could theoretically face jail time, right? Hush money, and apparently the way that it was done with falsifying records, is illegal in New York. And they're going to try to prove that he did this on purpose, right? So the thing about it is this. He goes on Truth Social, which is the social media platform that conservatives are on to just basically go after the judge and go after the judge's family and go after the witnesses and all that stuff. And there's a gag order in place that he says is unconstitutional, which is nonsense because gag orders have been around since the beginning of time. But that being said, I found this to be interesting was now they're threatening jail time because he has violated the gag order nine times. He violated it like three times before this. So it's like a dozen times now. And I was thinking about it because I don't care if he goes to jail or not. I don't care if he rots in jail. I don't care if he dies tomorrow. I don't care. I don't care if he lives to be 120. Don't care. But I was thinking about it, Joe. Imagine being in law enforcement and going to Quantico with the FBI or going someplace prestigious or maybe you're a Navy SEAL or maybe you're an Army Ranger or, you know, you're a Special military forces. badass. Yeah. Spe you know, a badass, right? Yeah. And getting all that stuff, and then you, you rise to the ranks, and then you go to the Secret Service. And now you have a job to protect the President of the United States, or a former President of the United States. Because Jimmy Carter's walking around with, I'm assuming Jimmy Carter's still alive. Yeah, with, he is. With Secret Service protection, right? Bill Clinton's walking around with Secret Service protection. George Bush, all of them, right? Imagine being assigned to Trump and having to go sit in a cell with him. I don't know if they're going to be in the cell, but they'll probably be in the vicinity uh, somewhere is watching be, him. Is he going to be outside on a chair playing with his phone? Is that, what, is that what's going to happen? 
I'm telling you, he's not going to see any jail time if that happens. They're going to put him over there in Margo, Margo Lago or something. No, but th- it's not a Florida trial. It's a New York trial. They'll put him under house arrest or something, dude. Yeah. He, if he goes to prison or he goes to jail, it's going to be one of those resorts. No, that's yeah, not how that works. On, it, this is a criminal case. Oh. This, isn't, this isn't a... Uh, uh, look, like, even if they just there, put him in a room and told me he can't get out... What president has done jail time? What president has done what he's done? But I'm saying, what president has gen- done jail and, time? And this is the positive of, of, of Donald Trump, right? This is the positive of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has exposed holes inside of the Constitution. He has exposed holes in there because people thought... There would never be a criminal as president. That, that basically, basically, they never thought that Al Capone would be president, right? Yeah. And whether you like him or not, his politics or not, that's not the, that's not the, the, the moral of the story. The moral of the story is, is that he is poking, this is a good thing for the country, is that he pokes holes in it all, that presidents can be, can, can be immune to everything? Really? Really? So you're telling me that Biden can go off, pull out a gun, because no. and, and kill somebody and, no. and not face anybody? Because that's actually no. I what understand a lot of what you're saying, there. but the thing is, when you're when you're comparing the presidents, and you're comparing <laughs> Sith, Trump exposed Stormy schools. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, with Trump, I don't think any other president has had the wealth that he has had. You know, as far but as but we don't know if he's wealthy or not. Well, the thing is, is that he owns these businesses, right? He has the Trump Tower. He has properties. You know, basically, the wealth is based on the, the accumulation. The wealth of is things. based on he's never proven. He has never proven that he's wealthy. He has never proven that he's educated. He has that, never proven anything. But the thing is, and what I'm saying is that he owns these. He well, in in theory. He owns these properties. Did you know he, he was he was not things. allowed to buy the Buffalo Bills? He wanted to oh, buy yeah, the yeah. Buffalo Bills. You know why? That. You know why he couldn't buy the Buffalo Bills? Why? He couldn't prove they had money. Ah, true that. You know, I think it's just in the name itself. You know, but right. when you're looking at it and you're you're seeing his name on this building or Trump Tower, you know, the appearance makes it seem like yeah, hey, he has all this wealth, he owns all these properties. But I'm saying I don't think a president has been in the public eye as much as Trump. The only other one that I can think of would be like uh, going back to Ronald Reagan because he was very well known because he was yeah. an actor before he comp- he became president. You know, that's the only other comparison I can can think of because Trump has also been in, you know, like reality TV series, things of that nature. The Apprentice, for example, right. you know, and it kind of propelled him to stardom, you know, and he became famous, you know, after the fact that he was already famous, it made him even more uh, appealing to a broader range of people. Now, the up to the minute uh, testimony going on right now, because, again, no live cameras are allowed in there. Uh, they're talking about uh, Karen McDougal and yeah. Trump's long term, long time um, affair with with uh, with her, uh, Karen McDougal. So let's go demon mic time on this. Oh, Tavares was asking us a, a, a serious question here. He was asking if we are going to be in Paris. Um, I would say that I have about an 80% chance of yes. I don't see what would stop me. Budos in Paris. I don't see what would stop me. I, I think Fernandez is going to be going out there too with you. Oh, dude, he and I would tear that place up, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chicano Fuerte, but uh, if you're not there, he and I are going to be going to uh, Amsterdam, getting in some trouble. Okay, so Demon Mike time. Karen McDougal is the person that he uh, that Trump uh, had a long term affair with. Hotter than Stormy Daniels, yes or no? I'm, I'm showing photos right now on my screen. Let's go ahead and check this out. Former Playboy playmate, Karen McDougal. She's cute, dude. She's hotter. She's hotter. She's hotter. Okay, we're gonna call, call we're gonna call up Stormy. Let's see if it's not safe for work. Oh God. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Stormy Downs. He has a type. He has a type. If he had voted in the batty brackets, it would have been all about Scarlett Johansson, right? I mean, that's that's his type. City Sweeney. He would have chosen City Sweeney over some Selma. Like, yeah. All day, every day. Likes big hair. Now, I will say this, though. 
I, I will keep... I will give him props over that because this is kind of where um, Bill Clinton went with <laughs> in the nineties. Look at what Mario Cavasso says. He says Mike Taylor and Rudy J are planning on going to Paris. <laughs> oh, look at Sam Salinas says Stormy is pretty low bar though. <laughs> What about uh, Monica Lewinsky? Would she have done it oh, for you? Oh, God, dude. Would uh, she have done it for you? Not really, bro. I mean, why? Uh, I mean, if, yeah, if, I, if a president could get anyone in the world for the most part, right? And, and I know that's just just talk, right? Yeah. Why Monica Lewinsky? You know why? Why Paula it, Jones? You know why? At the end of the day, it came down to convenience and it being an easy prey for him, an easy kill. Why Paula Jones? Ah, don't know. He had a type too, man. He did, dude. What about Marilyn Monroe? Could could you could you blame Gee, JFK? I don't blame the brother at all, man. <laughs> the Sydney Sweeney of the fifties and sixties, and the infamous "Happy Birthday, Mr. President." <laughs> I know. <laughs> so let's give Donald Trump some props because Karen McDougal. Is wins the bat? Well, no. It would probably okay. Uh, it would probably be in the finals of like the 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 celebrity people that they cheated with because I think Ronald Reagan also. I mean, Nancy Reagan is one as well. He married Nancy Reagan, he but did? that's that's who he cheated on his first wife with, right? The mistress, right? So Nancy Reagan went from mistress to to uh, first lady. The batty brackets of presidential paramours maybe that should be a thing <laughs> would be marilyn monroe versus karen mcdougall oh god or marilyn monroe god. against stormy daniels <laughs> hey maybe we should have that bracket come up around election time yeah i don't think jimmy <laughs> i don't think jimmy carter carter was diddling no. anybody he, he's I, a I, peanut I, farmer bro he's, he's, he's low key man yeah, the only nuts he cared about were the peanuts on the ground man. <laughs> exactly man you know poor J uh jimmy he's um like He's in years hospice. Old now, man. Yeah, he was in hospice and stuff, dude. So um, it won't be long for him now. But, you know, he was he's a great guy, dude. I remember him as a kid, you know, when I, he was president. I was a little kid at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mom, pops, you know, my mom and everybody, my family around me talking about him. Even as even today, my dad's like, he has good things to say about Jimmy Carter. He's yeah. like, yeah, he was a great man, you know, this and that. Did you know that there's a congresswoman in um, in. Uh Washington right now that used to work at a strip club? I don't doubt that, bro. <laughs> Look, well, I'll show you. Let me go ahead and show that. Anna Paulina Luna. Luna. They had a thing going on the X. Which they had stupid. a picture of her. And what was that other girl? No, it was actually it was actually uh, Lauren Boebert and, yeah. and AOC. Yeah. Uh, but, USOA had released the picture. Yeah. So she's a Republican congresswoman who was working at a strip club for many years. Now, she says she was just a, a waitress, which... Uh, you know, and then now she's trying to hide the fact that that's part of her history. You know, fake news, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, and it's so funny because people make fun of AOC all the time. <laughs> oh my god! The bracket sit man. The the bracket uh, <laughs> presidential side pieces. <laughs> Mario Cavazos, Thomas Jefferson had his slaves as side chicks. God, bro, <laughs> stuff was wild back then, man. But, uh, you know, this uh, Ana Paulina Luna, she's a nugget, man. Hard 10. It's a line sack of yeah, shit, that's but she's the, a hard 10. That's going to be the next batty bracket when we get into the election time. Presidential side pieces. No, man, but AOC, dude, she's has two degrees from a prestigious <laughs> university. So because she was a bartender, people give her shit. Look at this, AOC's man. great. Charlie Hernandez. She looks like she has a nasty side. <laughs> <laughs> Who the Luna chick? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, man. Well, I, I see. Well, you know, you all see the, 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 the. Uh... Well, you better check the pictures before I show them. The Demon Mike Hour is uncensored. She was. Uh, she was also an Instagram baddie. Was she? Yeah. There, the, there are. Hey, since we're Big talking TV about the baddie and brackets and all baddies and all this, let's go ahead and get some love to our boy Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting. All right. MCS General Contracting, more than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business, honest pricing, high quality work, 
They get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. Got that diamond hard concrete, baby. Yeah, man, I got that diamond hard concrete in my backyard, man, because uh, Leha and his crew came out there and did some work in my backyard, extended my patio, built a sidewalk for me, some steps and a landing. Looks good, man. Everyone in my family who's been by has looked at it and said, man, that's a good, good job. Like, yeah. they're impressed. And uh, so, fantastic. Dilo reaching out to us saying, I love this show. That's right. There you go, man. Hey, you know what? This is funny, too. Look at Mario Cavazos. She was a waitress oh, so at Los Locos. <laughs> Jesse asking the question, how, how down bad are you? Lauren, Lauren Boebert, hot or not? Nah? Dude, she's smoking hot, dude. She's a smoke show. She's a, you know what? The crazy hot matrix. God. She's a nine crazy and a nine hot man. Look at Tex it makes Mex. it worth it. Tex Mex Frank, Frank fan of the show, man, a friend of the show. Thank you, man. He says you should do a Sancha, Sancha bracket. bracket. <laughs> Infamous Sanchez. You know, I was thinking about something, and I'm going to ask Rudy J about this. Uh, I was in New Orleans, right? And you know, you go to different cities, and there's different ethnicities there, right? You come to San Antonio, hundred women go by, sixty five of them are going to be Latina, right? Yeah. You go to Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was last week, 100 women go by, and 75 of them will be white, right? You go to New Orleans, a lot more African American there, right? Yeah. And they were doing like a twerking contest and all this stuff at the Jazz Fest, and it was fun. But I was thinking about something, and I'm going to send a message out to Rudy J about this, because Rudy's my boy, man. I love Rudy J. There's certain outfits that women wear based on their ethnicity that I think is top tier. So, for example, if you're Latina and you're wearing white shorts and hoops, dude, that does it for me. Really? Okay. If you're Asian and you're wearing something red, like a red dress, does it for me. If you're white, white girl, like like the girls when I was at Texas State back in the day, they used to wear the denim shorts with the uh, the boots. I mean, San Antonio Rodeo, that's all you see. Yeah. Knockout. But for African American women, the 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 attractive ones out there, dude, when they wear camouflage, dude, there's the something camo, the, the camo <laughs> oh, look, whether it be a camo top or camo pants or camo shorts, top tier, does it for you. Demon Mike appears. Jeez, man, it's just like that saying that goes right when you have a four locos and you rub that sucker like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning because you want another. Post Malone shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Mario asking the question, was, Christi was Christina Milian one of your crushes? Uh, dude, Christina Milian was hot, dude. I mean. Oh, yeah. She was hot. She dude. was hot, dude. A little bit of everything. 42 oh, years old now. Oh, look at this, man. This is a does it for Sith. <laughs> That's a sundress, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> Use a freak, freak mic. <laughs> You can be any girl in a sundress, dude. Any girl in a sundress, if they can pull it off, they can take it off. You know what I'm saying? Love it. Love it. Look at that, D'Lo. Lots of rub and talk today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This has been a fun show. You know what? It's so much fun. You know, you know, Jim Rome back in the day, rack it, rack them. Yeah. This is the show we got to rack, man. If there's such a thing... <laughs> As a show for an award ceremony, yeah, like a Texas award for podcasting, this is the episode. You know what? We're looking for names, right, to nickname our fans of the show. Oh, and yeah. Somebody said borrachos. Um, like they were saying borrachos, and I'm like, okay, mm, yeah. well, I don't know if I want to be known as a borracho kind yeah. of per se, you know, but we got to think of a nickname for for the fan base, you know, because Mike Taylor has his Thunderdome. Right. What will we call now, what's in the building? I mean, is Rudy J part of Thunderdome? Is that how that works? That he's part of Thunderdome now. He's part with, you know, doing the show with Mike Taylor and whatnot. Okay. So, you know what? It's the, the demons. <laughs> the demons, bro. <laughs> we got we to gotta think of something, man. 
that's that's demon mike time right there <laughs> no but you all got to think of nicknames for yourselves man like what do you want to be called you yeah. know got to think of that very cool hey well we got to get going for the rest of the day again don't forget to subscribe to jeff garcia from locked on spurs and ken's five also again i'm, I'm today's guest on locked on spurs uh and then also don't forget mcs general contracting if you need that diamond hard concrete talk about slabs swimming pools basketball courts parking lots driveways give mcs a call man they do a fantastic job oh, look at jeff he's in here he says people on the low show on youtube page are asking how they can get a texican hat like the one joe wore on monday you can ask my boy yeah tex-mex frank he's the one that sells them man go on the x and look for tex-mex frank hit my boy up man he's got you he got you man it's got a whole bunch of gear there but I'll the texican hat is nice show uh show my screen real fast sure Let's see. Let's see where it, where it was. It It was the other day, the other day, the other day, the other day. That's my Texican hat right there. There you go. It was at the uh, Jazz Fest with my daughter. Am I going back this weekend? We shall see. No. But uh, yeah, that's my Texican hat. It does have the Texican logo as well. Uh, it's a good looking hat, man. It is. And, and I'm not a hat guy. Yeah, but it's a nice. I'm not hat. a hat guy, but I wore it uh, out there. It was fantastic. Yeah. You know, with my with my Miller Lite. Dude, that's all they had was Miller Lite MGD. Hey, dude, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ever frown on Miller Lite. I like Miller Lite. I got a fridge full of Miller Lite. I got Tecate. I got Modelo. I'll take Miller Lite. Worst beer. Let's talk about that real fast. Oh. What is the worst beer? The worst beer is Coors. Oh yeah, Coors dude. Light is water. No MGD Miller Genuine Draft from back in the day. Yeah, you drink that, bro. You wake up with the worst headache of your life, man. Schlitz. Oh, oh I'm gonna tell you the worst. The worst beer is Budweiser. Budweiser. What kind of Budweiser? No, just the, the regular, you know, Clydesdale one. You know, the, the Budweiser. That is Bud Ice. Awful. Worst beer ever. Dude, Bud Ice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's like the leftovers that's in the tank. You know, let's yeah. go ahead and distill this. Uh, you know, I want to throw out one also that I hate. I hate Guinness. That, oh, that, Guinness isn't bad, dude. That dark, right. that dark crap. I like that. Oh beer. my god, I like no. that beer. Red dog, red dog, <laughs> bro. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> Milwaukee's best. best. Oh <laughs> man, that smells like freaking ass in a can, dude. <laughs> that beer already smells skunky when you open it up. Just like Bush beer. You ever open a can of Bush? Yeah. Shh. Oh. <laughs> God. Oh, my Jesse asked saying that I was drinking uh, Zima's back in the day. You probably were. I, I drank one one time. They and roofied never it. Never again. <laughs> Dude, Zima <laughs> was garbage, man. Zima. For uh, local. Oh, you take that back. Rolling Rock is good. Who's saying Rolling Rock? Rolling Rock's all right. It's an acquired taste, Mike. Yes. It is. It is. But that one they used to have in the those like little growlers, the mini growlers that they have at HEB, it's called Grolsch. Yeah. And it's like four beers, and they're like in green bottles, and they have the pop top. That that's pretty good, man. That's my jam. I like those. Deal of MD twenty twenty oh, only if it's orange, no, dude. Man. Only if it's orange. Oh, bro. I have a story about that. It's it's gonna be a uh, tall tales time on that one. Do I do it now or later? But we'll do it later. But I had a story too about an MD twenty twenty. One of my boys, he wanted to go ahead and reminisce one time. We're at my friend Ed's house, right? And he's like, man, I'm going to drink a bottle of MD-20. No me pasa nada, this and that. He went and bought the orange MD-2020. And he just chugged it in front of us to be a badass. And we're all laughing at him. I told my friend, he's going to be in the corner somewhere asleep in the next 10, 15 Dead minutes. Dead to the world. Sure enough, man. He's on the sofa. Passed the hell out. Woke up. Felt like he had, you know, been reincarnated, dude. He felt like hell. I'm looking at what the <laughs> alcohol content is at MD-2020. 18%. It's four times that of beer. Oh, is fat tire good? Fat tire is good, but I'm going to tell you one thing about that fat tire. It's that Belgian beer. It's going to oh. put you on your ass just oh, off of that six Bel pack. Belgian beer is amazing. Yeah, man. Need a good beer segment. Hey, we should do a good beer segment. You know what? I like to brew my own beer, too. So I got my, my little you know kit ready to go. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of actually buying my ingredients so i can go ahead and start brewing my own beer it takes a couple weeks for everything to finish you know and get to the right let's say flavor profile that i'm looking for yeah so once i start brewing it probably about six six weeks 
afterwards we'll be able to taste and there's some good little breweries here in town uh i know jason garcia took me to one for his going away party uh, a couple of months ago oh yeah that yeah. was pretty good there's some downtown that are very weathered good. souls man has a good they have good beer man we got to go to weathered souls man they got really? some good food too good eats and it's african-american owned man so support your local you know beer uh let's say uh, your local breweries man they got good beers over there there's one in Corpus, by the way. If you are going to the Corpus area this summer, it's called Rebel Toad, R-E-B-E-L, Toad, T-O-A-D. That is the best local brewery I've ever been to. Yeah, look Rebel at Tex-Mex, Toad. And by man. the way, the owners of Rebel Toad, Nuggets. Damn. Nuggets. Look at Tex-Mex Frank says, appreciate you, fellas. I need to give you a couple of hats to give away. Hey, always appreciate it, man. Oh, We're nice. Reciprocating the love, brother. Appreciate Dude, I, you. I was wearing it in New Orleans all weekend long, baby. Yeah. All weekend long. I wore mine over at Fiesta, too, and a lot of people were saying, hey, man, I like your hat. Where'd you get it? I'm like, Tex-Mex Frank, dude. Frio light, baby. No, mamas, man. <laughs> hey, you know what? They need to have that beer. No mamas beer. Nice. <laughs> we need to talk to our boy over there at the Mad Pecker Brewery because I got, I got an idea for a beer, man. Very cool. Well, let's wrap things up. Don't forget to hit the like, hit the like button on the way out. Uh, tip us if you want. It keeps the show going. And also, share us. All right? Go go on to our live tab. Hit the share button. Copy it. Post it onto your Facebook. Post it onto your uh, Twitter accounts. Because, again, this is not a dated show. You can listen to this show at, at noon, at 5 p.m., at 8 p.m. It's all good in the hood. Everyone have a fantastic day. Uh, again, don't forget, Texican. Frank Mac, uh, uh, Tex Tex Mex Mex Frank. Frank does all that. USOA merch is out, according to Sith. Yep. That's on Bear County Social Apparel's site on Instagram. Go check it out. I'm not allowed to USOA yet, but um, I'm making my way. They're not going to make you an honorary member only because you want to be in it so bad. Oh, I know. I'm. I'm <laughs> it's going to be like a like a doctorate program. It's going to be like a, 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 a fake degree. If you have to ask to be in it, you don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like uh, Forrest Gump. This seat's taken. Yep, this seat's taken. All right, <laughs> and we'll have a fantastic day. My name's Mike Jimenez. That's Joe Garcia. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. We'll be back tomorrow.